Soldier, farmer, family man, John William Graham was many things. He was also a man much like the rest of us. Contrary to popular belief, people who lived in the past responded to situations in the same way we would respond now. Soldiers wrote to their loved ones at home to catch them up on their lives and let them know that they were safe. Graham wrote to his parents daily. It was the only thing they had to know that he was still alive in those days, before the instant gratification of text message. Graham writes this particular letter to ease his parents' worry about him joining the military, and all the possible dangers which come from that choice. To prevent his parents from being worried about his occasional inconsistent letter writing, Graham has to make some kind of excuse. He first told them how difficult it was to write letters, writing, It takes me a long time to write letters. I have to rack my brain for something to write. He then proceeds to list his daily responsibilities, lasting from 2 a.m. until after dinner, which prevent him from writing throughout the day. The list includes many tiring training activities. His aim is to invoke the logical side of his parents by allowing them the inference that his lack of letters are due to his tiring and busy life. This is in the hopes that logic will dissolve any emotional thoughts that lead them to think he is dead. John W. Graham also tries to dispel their worries for the future, using his most persuasive strategies to let them know he is ready for the challenges ahead. His description of his difficult training exercises mentioned earlier give Graham the credibility as a capable soldier as they show the strength of his preparedness. But Graham also uses a strategy that speaks to them specifically. He tells them that the lumber making up his barracks is poor quality, using the technical language he learned from his father's lumber business. In doing so, he is speaking their language, putting himself in a position where he can be perceived as their intellectual equal. Once seen in that light, his credibility soars, and he can acquire the respect he needs to make his own choices. It's strange to think of how these soldiers were worried about by their loved ones in the past, now that we know the eventual outcomes of their lives and the sequence of the war. John William Graham was one of the lucky ones. He was able to come home, see his family again, and live a full life. It's important for us to connect with these voices of the past. It's easier to grasp what World War II meant for our country when we can put faces and personalities on the numbers. In understanding why people of the past acted and felt as they did, we are even closer to understanding ourselves in a new light.